You're good. You're good. Okay, we're on. Welcome back. How's it look? Sharon? It looks good. Yeah, it it's looks definitely good? better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, today I have Sharon with me, and uh, Sharon and I don't have the technical uh, <laughs> skills that Elizabeth or Alistair or Jeanette or all the other people that work with us. The two of us are the, <laughs> the least capable. <laughs> can't believe how hard it's been for us to figure out how to do this. It looks so darn easy with Elizabeth the last few days. Anyway, hope this works. Uh, I got up early this morning uh, before I went to work and I threaded up the rest of the loom and I slayed it and I have it ready at this position to, uh, to continue the slaying. Ta-da! So, here we go. And Sharon, you're going to kind of come in here and look at this. So, <laughs> that's the phone ringing. That's probably Elizabeth or Jeanette or Alistair calling us to tell us that it's <laughs> all wrong. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm going to ignore it and we're going to just carry on. Um, huh. Okay, so I've got my read in here. And I'm slaying this at 18 ends per inch. It's a 12 dent reed, one per dent, two per dent, over and over and over and over again. And I'm just gonna show you how I slay the reed. Um, well, there's lots of different ways to do it. A lot of people like to block it so that it can't move. I don't like to block it. I want it to move because if it moves, then my body doesn't have to move. And so, I use this arm to move it back and forth so that I can see in there and then I can see here and I can see in here and I can see here. And if it moves, then I don't have to do this and this with my body and have all those horrible little crunches that happen to your spine when you're, when you're trying to get into uh, tight places. So, and because these have all got their little ties on them, those little group ties, nothing is going to fall out. Um, so here's a tie. God, the phone's ringing again. Do you think that really is them trying to get our attention? <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette's watching right now. Is so, she? Yeah. Hopefully it's all good. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to see comments, I think. Yeah. You, can you? Yeah. Oh, good. Linda, so, Linda King. Linda King. Uh, do we look okay, Linda? <laughs> I can't see anything, so... Anyway, okay. So here we go. Two, one, two, one. I know I was waiting for Linda to answer me, but she can't. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, here's what happens. I let the, I let the beater go back. Just goes back and then I can see where to put my slave hook. Then I bring the beater forward and I can see back in there how to get my thread. And then they come up together and grab it. So it goes back, I can put my reed hook in, I pull it this way, I can go get my next two, so it's two. They get put on my finger like that and we go back up and get them together. But now I can see my slot, pull it this way. Now I can see my heddle, go get them. Slot, threads, get them. So for me, this works the best because my spine is straight the whole time. And I don't have to move, my beater moves. So my eyes can see. So maybe just a little different. It's always good to learn different ways, but with all things, I always say you do what works best for you. So it won't take long to finish this off. When I started uh, started slaying, I just measured from the center over to the far right. So I didn't start slaying in the middle. I started on this far right hand side. I put my measuring tape in the middle of the beater, find, found out my 13 inches over here because it's 26 inches, stuck my uh, reed hook in there and started to slay all the way across. So I'm just moving in one direction. And I need to make 
sure this is a twosie. That I don't talk too much and make a mistake. One and two. So let me just check that. I check these all the time because uh, I definitely don't see like I used to. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Sharon, has anybody posted that it looks okay? Yes, Linda said it looks great. Oh, thanks, yeah. Linda. You're the best. <laughs> so I ended on a two. I'm going to go back in here and start on a one. Sometimes I use my sleigh hoof to go in there and help move things over. But I don't pick up and put down a lot. Not a lot of uh, letting go, dropping the bundle, picking the bundle up. My left hand is always holding the bundle and my sleigh hook and my pointer finger on my left hand are my tools that bring the threads out. Maybe it would, you'd be able to see in here well. Is that a better angle? Yeah. I'll try different things. Sure. So here I am checking. So this is going to be starting on a two. Oh, good. Good. Let's see. You can direct us. <laughs> Our audience can direct us. Yeah. Sharon is holding a big iPad this time because I don't have a fancy phone. In the last couple of days, we've used Elizabeth's super new swish phone i guess i should get myself one of those if we're going to be doing this <laughs> but then i'd have to figure out how to use it and that would be daunting Makes me really appreciate our cameramen that film for the online guild. They spend so much time getting the perfect angle, and sometimes there's three, four cameras running all at the same time so that we can switch back and forth. They are so great. Move all of this over a little bit. <clears throat> oh, your arm is great. 
I kind of squish them between my fingers. I can tell that there's two in one and one in the other. Two in one. Two in one. Two in one. My phone that's probably Elizabeth calling. <laughs> <laughs> Our backup. Yeah. We put out SOS calls to everybody <laughs> in the world that we knew. We can't figure it out. <laughs> and after they're all calling us. Oh, that is just too funny. There's only uh, a couple things I'm really good at in life. <laughs> That's leaving, gardening, and raising kids. I, I was okay at that. <laughs> They're all still talking to me. <laughs> Last black stripe, and then we'll get this sucker tied on. We'll see how I tie on. Like everything else, no fuss, no muss. Really easy and simple way to tie on. I'm working on the back four now are the five to eight harnesses five to eight so you have to get in a little bit further Two more. You can get in there. <laughs> hey, little fella, come here. One and two. Ta da! Okay, one last check. One, two. And ta da! -da. Alrighty, so now I'm going to tie on to the front apron. <clears throat> uh, just release this. It's uh, kind of loud. I should probably wax that, <laughs> but I'm used to it. Okay, get my little apron rods or cords in the right place. Nice thing about this stick, it's marked. For where these card cords are supposed to be. If you ever want to know how this goes on, let's do. This is, gives me the opportunity to sh show you. Pardon me, how to make a, a loop like this. So this is like a purse string. There's three purse strings here, and you just stick your fingers in like that, and then do that and pull this over, and it gives you a loop. Now those two are all going that way, so I must have done it that way. Yeah. Practice that one. And then you can just slide them on like that. It's super secure. It's, it's really good. And what else is really good, I've noticed some looms where the cords come up straight and then they just build on top of each other. If you can have them staggered like this so that they're forming that, that uh, V, then you don't get build up when the cords wrap around the front. All right, so to get this started. Um, a lot of people wind up, well, a lot of people tie on different ways. Uh, I learned how to 
uh, lash, like to tie little bouts and then lash it all on. And I used to have so much trouble with tension and then some lady taught me how to do this. I will be eternally grateful for her, to her. I don't know who she is. She was from Northern Ontario. Um, and she taught me this method of tying a warp on and I've used it ever since. So I tie on in relatively small bouts. It takes a little bit longer, but you end up with better tension, I feel. So I take four dents worth of threads and four dents worth of threads. I know it seems awfully fine. I lay them on top of the apron rod, come up on either side, and I go through the loop once and through the loop twice and cinch it down. So I do it on this end, and then to get this up, I'm going to do it on this side. So four dents and four dents. Comes down, lays on top of the rod, and comes up, and I go through once and through twice. Back. Then I come back to this side and work all the way across. Four and four. Everything comes down, lays flat. So it lays flat. My fingers come in here, get it, move it to this position. Then I come up on either side, go through the loop once, through the loop twice, and cinch and drop it. I don't have my final tension on that yet, but this way of attaching is super easy. So four dents and four dents. I'll move this out of the way a little bit. It lays on top. My fingers come under here, grab it, bring it to that position, and do one, two, cinch. Four and four. it in slow motion and after you do that you can pick up the speed and go faster so you can just see this finger lays it down flat this comes and gets it brings it to there and we bring it on top one two so now I'll just go a little faster If you have a method of tying on that works for you and you have perfect tension, don't change a thing. If you find that your tension isn't very good and you're always frustrated frustrated with it, then you might want to try this. But So many different ways to do this. One of the reasons that I do <clears throat> tie on in small bundles is so that um, the threads are coming down nice and straight out of the reed and attaching uh, to the apron rod. And if you tied, say, in bouts of an inch and an inch, that leaves a much bigger space in between here. And then when you start to weave, those threads that are on this angle, because the bouts are so big, they have to move over. They move over, move over, move over as you put your header in. That means that the outside of those bouts are getting tighter because they're having to move out and straighten up. The inside guys aren't going anywhere. They're still straight. And that's where why sometimes people will, you know, they think they've got it all down perfect. And then after they've woven their header in, that's when they find the big wah, 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 wah wave in it. And it's caused from too big a bout. So if you don't want to change that, then just start weaving much further up. But you waste yarn that way. So um, this method, I actually am using an awful lot for my front ties right now. Uh, but what the heck? 
I could have made them shorter. And I'm gonna just tighten that guy up a little bit just to bring my rod up. I always feel like a hairdresser when I'm doing this, you know, when they take your whole hair and comb it out and then toss that side, that piece to the side, like they do this and they do this and then they, wait a minute, they do this and this and they toss that to the side. <laughs> oh, I have aspirations. <laughs> I do cut my own bangs, much to the chagrin of my hairdresser. It'll go quite quickly. Uh, we'll probably have it all on, tied on in maybe 10 minutes tops, but we'll have great tension that will last through the whole warp. Thank you for all your nice comments. <laughs> That's uh, very kind of you to leave comments. Of course, it's really great that they're nice. <laughs> uh. Somebody wants to know where you get your weaving dresses from. They look comfortable. Connie. Oh, is asking. my dress? All my clothes I buy from my favorite store in the world, which is called Maiwa Handprints on Granville Island. And they have fabulous clothes. It's the only place I buy clothes. They sell online. So go to Maiwa, uh, M-A-I-W-A dot com. Maiwa dot com. And you'll get some of the most comfortable clothes you've ever owned. And what even better is that all of the clothes these clothes are uh, created with organic cotton, organic linen, natural dyes, and uh, Iwa works with incredible artisans in India. And they, it is truly slow cloth. You can trace every thread in the garment right back to the farm. It's a great, great company. Wow, Sharon, you're awesome. You can read questions and fill me. That's incredible. I've been really impressed. We're doing great. Elizabeth's going to be proud of us. <laughs> Elizabeth, are you out there? <laughs> so lucky I have this amazing team of people around me. I just couldn't do what we do without them. I couldn't. coming up to the place where we're going to get our final tension and uh, I'm going to show you the first clip I have that makes it really easy. Hopefully I can get the lead on this beard back and so on. Oh well, who cares? All right, <clears throat> so everything here looks fairly even, but it's not. There's some looser over on this side than here. But this knot is the knot that moves. 
it it will move when it has that double leaf in it. So there's there's something on this loom that moves front across the whole warp at once, and that is our front beam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm putting my hand down here, or you could do it over here or whatever, or crunch up with your uh, warpy hand. I'm gonna tear this beam. Oh, you got your finger over it? Ask if that's better. Is that Maybe better? I'm just touching it. Okay. Where's Try the that. Volume? Try that. Does that work better? Can you hear me? Someone post and say, we have sound back or not. Where is it? Uh, I think the microphone is covered. Okay, well, I uncovered it. Okay, so we're probably good. Okay. Do I need to go over anything, kids? <laughs> Sharon will read your comments. If you heard all of that or enough of that... Sound is back. Sound is back. Okay. Watch that hand. You were bragging <laughs> about how good... The tension was? Oh, bragging. What a <laughs> terrible thing to do. So, okay. I'll continue bragging about my wonderful tension. <laughs> it really is good. So I just kept pushing on this, but not really hard. It's just, you know, pressing on it. And you could feel them. I could feel them with the palm of my hands just moving ever so slightly. But now it feels pretty good. I don't want it to change. So I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to put in what I call my holding knot. Somebody's and asking if you could go over how you got the tension right. Okay. Uh, they could rewind after okay. and sure. watch this, yeah. right? Okay. I yeah. think you can rewind and watch it because I can't really change anything here. But basically, this had, no, had way less tension on it. I put tension on the beam. Oops. <laughs> Tightened it up. I, should, I really need to wax that. Sorry. Then I came across here and I pressed on all of these little bouts all the way across and then I tightened it up one more time and I pressed again and I tightened it up one more time. And now that I know that it's almost perfect, it's still off a little bit right here, but I'll fix that at right now. I'm going to go starting on the right hand side not stopping, I'm moving from the right, right across to the left and doing the same thing to every bundle. Cinch them up as tight as I can and you can see I can hardly move that. Put a final holding knot in and it's done. And I toss those bangs to the side. Toss. It, nothing is really moving, just a tiny little bit. But I know that everything is the same. So letting your beam do half of your work for you is awesome. Rather than doing this and then touching this one and this one and this one and this one, going back and forth, back and forth. Don't do that. Just start on one side, cinch everything up as tight as it can go, and move on. And when we get to the left-hand side, we're gonna say, oh my God, this feels tighter than the right-hand side. But the right-hand side, this side has had like five minutes to relax, to chill out. So you, we need to chill out and walk away until this side has had five minutes to chill out and it'll feel the same as this side. So if you could remind people that they can rewind later too, because we're getting people asking. Mm, yeah, so this video will be saved. This video will be saved and you, if you're just coming in in the middle, 
uh, and the questions have already been answered, then you'll be able to re-watch it. It's not going anywhere. It'll be saved. You can watch it later. So, tying on, awesome tension. These guys aren't moving at all. And like I said before, the right hand side is going to feel a tiny bit looser only because it was the first side I put the final holding knot on and when this side has sat as long as that side has been sitting, maybe five minutes, it'll feel the same. So that allows me to go and wind some bobbins and uh, by the time I come back, we'll be ready to to start weaving. So I'm gonna just get up and uh, push the loom out, out to the way a little bit and Sharon and I are gonna go up to the windowsill where I have my cones and we're gonna wind some bobbins. So I have my little handy dandy bobbin winder here covered in dirt. <laughs> Get in? Oh. Look good? Oh. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Most importantly, you have to be comfortable. Make sure we're close enough. Looks good from here. Okay. I'm putting my uh, cones of yarn on this little peg thingy at the, on the floor. And, uh, and so, and so, I wrap this around here and figure out which way my bobbin winder is going. I have two. I have a double ended in the studio for when I'm winding all my spools, but I just have a single ended at home and one goes one way and one goes the other just because of the way I have it clamped. So this guy is coming under. It's winding from under. And um, I, don't, I don't build up the sides of my bobbins ever. I'm going to wind this bobbin the way I normally wind all my bobbins. I'll wind a bunch of bobbins and get them ready. And then I'm going to show you on a piece of paper why I don't build up my sides first. I go straight across from one side to the other. Back and forth all the way from one side to the other until I get about halfway up the bobbin. Now I'm starting to come in a little bit more each time, not going all the way out, so I'm staying away from the edges. Voila. So that is my little sausage bobbin. And these bobbins never stick, they just, the yarn just flies off. If you have wine bobbins and you're finding, oops, you're finding that when you get to the end, they're always catching on you, there's a reason. And uh, you can avoid that. So. I can't use a bobbin winder without bare feet. Well, I actually am in bare feet all my life. Uh, but using an electric bobbin winder with shoes on? Hmm. This is how I wind mohair bobbins as well, too. So my finger is right on the bobbin. It's like right on here and it's putting the yarn exactly where I want it to be. It's not way out here because I don't have much control out here. I have less control. But if my finger is riding right on it, then I can put it exactly where I need it to be. 
And, you know, people will say, well, my fingers get burnt. Well, then don't hold on to it so tight. It's, you're guiding it. You don't have to grip it. Just, uh, just guide it. I have two more. A purple and my peacock. I couldn't live without this. While we're here, I'm taking the leaf sticks out. If the great weaving goddess is on our side, I'm going to pull the blocking pin out of this loom and we're going to have a shed and I can get started. And I'll weave a first towel for you. I'm going to weave one towel today. If Sharon's arms can hold out, but she, she'll tell us if, if they can't uh, hold out anymore. And, um, and then I think we're going to take Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off because it is Good Friday. That is there. better. Is that yeah. better? Yeah. 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 Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So, this is uh. <laughs> Somebody said this tech stuff is tricky. <laughs> yeah. So, here goes. I'm going to step on a treadle. For Tabby. Whoops! Wrong treadle. <laughs> there! Yay! It worked! Oh, looks good. Okay. So, off.
eight picks, half an inch worth of threads, and everything is in perfect alignment. And our tension is still exactly the same all the way across because those bundles were really small. So if you had made big bundles, or well, that's an exaggeration, but if you get the drift. If you had made your bouts like this and they were tied down and there's these big spaces between them, when you put your header in, those outside threads of the bundle have to move and become straight, which means they have tension coming on them. And the fellas in the middle, nothing's happening to those guys. They just stay coming down straight, but, but these guys had to do this. And so they got tighter, and that's where that differential comes from. You think you've got the whole thing perfect, and then you put your header in, and what, what the hell? <laughs> like, what happened? Okay, so I think I'm just going to weave my very first towel following the sequence of the warp. I'm going to weave a little, I'm going to weave an inch and a half of black for my hem, and then I'm going to weave uh, a square of black to be on the surface of the towel, and then I'm going to weave a big rectangle of four by four, and a nice square of green, and four by four, and uh, the same thing out the other side. And I'm going to aim for like 30 inches. So what I need to do is uh, just make myself a sketch. And I will fill in as I go along. I don't have a running tape ever on my looms. I just sort of have an idea of what I'm aiming for. So I want to have my towel is going to have its hem, which I don't count. I weave it and then I don't count it. Then it's going to have a square, a perfect square of black. It's going to have in the center that green. So I need to know how wide that green is. Just remind them that they can tune in later yeah. as well. I'm getting questions. Yes. Yeah. You can turn, tune, tune in later and watch this. It's not going away. We're not going to go backwards because it's all being filmed and it will be saved. So this is five and a half inches. This little section here is going to be five and a half inches. My whole towel is going to be 30 inches of weaving. Uh, an inch and a half for the hem and an inch and a half for the hem up here. So there goes three inches and then I'm going to weave my first little square. So I'll fill this in and eventually I'll know uh, how long these are going to be. But I just want to get my hem in and my first square in here in black. And then I'll know how long my rectangle is. Because drawing affects everything, so, you know, I play it by ear. I'll get all my shuttles in a row. Black first. It starts with black. I'm going to advance my warp a smidge. I have that bean that needs some wax. Okay, here we go. So I'll go slow to start and go over technique at the loom. I sit uh, forward on my bench and sitting on my sit bones right on the edge. It forces my spine straight. My whole body is straight. My arms come out. It's a kind of a really nice, beautiful pose. So beat, throw a beat. Change. Do that again. I just want to back. Get, just want to go from this side where there's more light. Yeah. Sorry. Can okay. you do that again? Yeah, I will do it a million times again. And I'll move that out of the way for you. Throw. See that nice high angle? Because of my posture, my arm comes out here, and it puts that nice angle in. Throw, beat, change, beat her back. Throw happens because of my posture. Beat, change, beat her back. Throw, beat, change, beat her back. I'm not touching my salvages. Throw, beat, change, beat her back. I'm beating on an open shed every time. My posture is assisting in that angle because I'm sitting up and over. 
rather than sitting with your whole butt on the bench, you got your whole arse on the back on the bench, and you're sitting way back here, all of a sudden something happens. You instantly go into a slouch, which is bad. Your head's down, you're curving your spine, and you've shortened your legs and you've lost all the power of your legs. And you then end up having to do a lot more twisting to get this. And the other thing that happens is because you're hunched and your arms are back like that, you tend to bring your hand back this way. And this gets caught right here. It gets caught in there. It needs to be up here so that when you beat, it pulls it in. There's room for it to be pulled into the shed. So try this. Sit, push your bench back. Sit up straight. Find your sit bones. Spine straight. Palms to the sky. So it changes everything. When you are comfortable with that, look what I did. Don't you just hate it when that happens? <laughs> like everything's going great, and then that happens. That being this, <laughs> and it, of course it's going to happen here too when we get to that place, that place where your apron rods in the way all the time. So 18 picks per inch is nice and easy. I find 20 and 20 for playing really, really hard. You have to beat so hard. And half the time you don't because it hurts. So you're not getting 20 on 20 anyway. So 18 on 18 works really well for playing really in 8 2 cotton. Going nice and slow right now so you can see that rhythm. And I'm not touching my sausages, I'm letting the throw beat change beater back rhythm take care of it all. Throw beat change beater back. So I need my first black square plus my one and a half inches for the hemp. So. Can you ask if the sound, if they, people can hear the sound? Because I'm getting comments about the sound again. The sound. Yeah. Ask about the sound. Can you, can you hear? Can you guys hear us? Somebody tell us. Maybe not. You can't hear us at all? Not anywhere near the microphone. Sound is good, it says. Sound is good. Okay, oh, okay. good, good. All right. Okay, so I want a perfect square on the surface of this tea towel that is going to be an inch and... That, what's that? One, two, three, to that one here. Just, just, this is my uh, math challenge. God, I'm pathetic. Uh, just a, one line short of an inch and a half. So every, the world to, for me is a visual world. Uh, I don't do well any other way. So I need that inch and a half. I need three inches of plain weave for my hem and my first square. So I just have a little bit wait, little little ways to go. touching them at all. Okay, that looks like three inches, I guess. It is. It's a little more. So that's perfect. All right, so now I'm going to break this off, tuck my tail. I find my outermost edge thread. In this case, it happens to be down. 
it's down. So I'm going to go under it and back into the same shed and push it down. You can push it down or pull it up, whatever you want, but it's tucked in there now. Change the shed and now I'm going to work with two shuttles and I'm going to do a big long rectangle of this. So, Somebody wants to know about your light setup. This, uh, this you can't get anymore. This loom is uh, 34 years old, and this is a, an old, old, old light from Ikea. However, we do have similar, much more modern lights um, on all of our looms in the studio. But this guy's been on here for 34 years. So I got this at Ikea back in the day, and it screws up into here. We have fancy LEDs now that just sort of self-adhese to the bottom on the looms in the studio. But um, you might not have been here yes, or when we started yesterday. Yeah, this is my original spring loom that I've had since... Uh, when was he born? 1986. Okie doke. So I'm going to start a four purple, four uh, peacock sequence. I ended my black here, so I'm going to start my purple on this side. And I'm doing the same thing. I find it my outermost edge thread. I wrap under it because it's down. I go back in and tuck it in. So there's. There. So now it's four and four. Um, squaring one two three four not quite squaring so I need a little firmer beat than that um, and so when I'm working with two shuttles I'm scalloping these up the side I'm not going to break them off or tuck the tail every four picks who's gonna do that I'm not so this guy's gonna scallop up this side and the I'll start the turquoise or the peacock on this side so it can scallop up this side so one, well, what's really important is that you change the shed. <laughs> that helps. Somebody wants to know how many looms you own now. <laughs> um, well, I have a fewer than I had when I was doing my retreats. I don't know, but still have about eight or ten. I saw that knot coming. Be gone, knot. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I have two options. I want this to continue on the same size I, side. I don't want to interrupt the path. So I'm not going to tuck this one here and then start the new one over there because that blows my sequence of the shuttles being on op opposite sides and the scalloping. So I'm going to do something that I need to do in this situation. And that's the cool thing about being malleable as a weaver. Not everything always works out the same way. So you have to have some other cards in your back pocket to pull out to solve problems. And so this guy's exiting here. I, I need him to continue on. So I'm gonna do this and overlap them on the black and change it's locked in and now I'm gonna go back so that's a way of doing a join and that we will call the Sharon Broadley join because she taught me that not too long ago all right so there you go I'm still learning stuff all the time I I was gonna cut this off I'll just break it off I don't know where my scissors are anyway 
this will get completely trimmed off, but that does have a good fold like that right here, a double thread right there. And now I'm ready to continue on. Um, to, I need to advance my warp. I'm moving out of that sweet spot. So I'm gonna put my shuttles up there and advance. Jan Luet's not watching this. Because <laughs> he'd say, why don't you put some wax in there? It's this little joint in here that's 34 years of rubbing metal on wood. But I have never had to do anything to make this loom work. It just keeps on going. So here we go. One. You know, this side feels looser, and I have an opportunity to fix it. So look at that, bragging about that perfect tension. What the heck? So right now, before this goes too much further, I'm going to just put a little bit more tension on here. Just checking to make sure my floating press beam is attached, right? learning experiences. So I am just going to right now, because before we go too far, I'm going to put a little more tension on this puppy on this end. Sometimes this happens always on the salvage at the beginning. And often it just needs a minute little adjustment. There, it's straight again. And that's what I was watching. This fell was starting to go up a little bit. So, some people do the, uh, the first couple uh, Boats that they tie on, they pull them out to the side, which puts a little more tension on them. That's another good way to do it. It doesn't happen to me all the time, but of course it would happen on this because we're live. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You just have the skills to figure out what to do, and we make it a little tighter right now. So here we go. Back, back to it. nice little checkerboard there in the center and stripes in the middle. Okay. Checkerboard. 
card. Get this fun striping in here. that I was in on Monday and Tuesday and man it's completely transformed my head and that's the wonderful thing about being creative no matter what you do if you can just get your fingers wet dive into the pool it doesn't matter what it turns out like in times like this it's just being active uh, and starting something helps bring us out of our worries. Well, it sure does for me, anyway. And the other thing that I always like to do when I'm worried and I need something like that to get me out of my head is to make something simple. To just start simple, because it's, it's easy. Sharon suggested that I do a two stripe and I laughed. I said, oh, I'm the queen of two stripes. I do everything I do is a two stripes. The, the last two kits, the last three kits that we launched in the, the business, uh, the rustic elegance tea towel was huck in a two stripe. The Gandhi sunrise scarf was a two stripe. The first um, episode of this season and twills was a two stripe. So I was so happy that Sharon let me use her graphic because it took me somewhere else. All right, so we're getting to that place where those darn apron sticks are here. Now I'm going to just be very careful. Power, power your little arm, Sharon. Good. <laughs> the battery is getting low, though. Oh, no. Just got a message. I never thought about that. Shit. Shoot. <laughs> oh, my God. Well. Go, go production weaver speed. <laughs> yeah, I can't go that fast. That means we have 10% left. Oh, I never thought about that. Either. But, you know what? I could run downstairs and get the charger. Sure. If you didn't move, we could plug you in. Sure. Okay, and look it. I got caught. I got caught on my stick on that side. I'm coming. I'll be right back. I have to get the charger. <laughs> you talk and I'm sharing. <laughs> this is the view from Jane's beautiful home. <laughs> it's a gorgeous day here on Salt Spring Island. Studio's off in the distance there. We're up at Jane's house right now in Jane's weaving room. She's just down getting the charger so we can keep filming here. We're working on a tea towel. If you just tuned in. Okay, I have an extension cord and I have the charger. Great. excitement. God, this is beautiful. Sharon, look at it. Isn't I know. Fun? Yeah, it's really gorgeous. It looks beautiful. All right. Well, I'm going to fix this later.
mind. Somebody's asking about explaining the scalloping on the edges, so they must have just tuned in. Somebody's asking about the scalloping on the edges, so they must have just tuned in. So yeah. I don't know if you want to yeah. give that. I'm sca I am scalloping up the sides. And um, for everybody who's just tuning in right now, this video will be saved. And you'll be able to watch the entire thing on our Facebook page. And I'll explain why. Well, I, I can explain that part again uh, right now because it's fairly simple. I'm doing a four peacock, four purple color sequence. And I would never do all of these color and weave sequences if I had to tuck my tail and break the thread off every four threads. It would just, it would take the fun out of it. And I have learned from experience and having woven so much of this that it doesn't make any difference when you scallop up the sides. Never. I have towels that are 20 years old. And by the time they've been washed, you don't even see it. Or if you do, you see it as a nice color coming up the side. It's a, an added feature. It's just fine. So, that's what I do. But, like I see to everybody, you know, you need to do what you need to do. Some people would tuck their tail every time. But they might be not inclined to do four and four sequences very often. Okay. So I need to do some math. <laughs> you dads. that zone where my apron rod will be completely wrapped around. And that won't happen anymore. Oh, I'm so happy when we get to that place. You know, with this kind of posture, you can weave for so long without it hurting you. When you do this loom, is super easy on the body because it, the shed is so opens up so beautifully and so simply. All right, so I'm going to advance a bit more, get that around the corner, and I'm going to measure and do a little drawing. I should have done some of this before, but I love to humiliate myself in front of the world. <laughs> All right, so if this is going to be 30 inches, that means I have to take five, uh, that's like, I'm going to just round that down to 25. I have 25 left over and I used up, I used up uh, an inch and a half on this end and an inch and a half on that end for my first square. So that's three more inches. So that takes me down to 22, 
right? 22, so then these sections have to be 11. 11 and 11 is 22, 27 and a half, 29 and a half, that's close enough for me. <laughs> yeah. And if it's a little bit longer, it could be 12 actually, because we I have allowed 36 inches for every towel. towel. So now I'm gonna measure from my striping sequence. Holy crow, holy crow. This section is now 14 inches long. How about that? <laughs> See what happens when you just let it rip? So 14 and 14. See why I have that extra? <laughs> this is gonna be a longer towel. 28, never mind, <laughs> never mind. That's how things go in Jane's life. <laughs> so, oh, but you know what? I have to end this because I started on a purple and I want to end on a purple. So it's either got to be half an inch more or I'm going to go back and take it out. So seeing I've already gone way over my limit because I'm talking too much. I'll go take four out. Tuck that peacock tail. And start our green. So we're, you know, we're almost at the halfway point on this towel. It didn't take very long. All that to do this. <laughs> and tuck. So I'm going under, back over here, and there. Okay. So now I'm going to put these four purple back in. Four. Gee, I just can't believe I got 14 inches done that quickly. Got an extension cord, found the charger, and talked to you. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Green. I'm going to just make a nice square of green. Ideas forming already for the next towel. Getting all those vertical stripes in here now. That's so much fun. And how the colors all changing. Of course, weaving with just one color goes way faster. I want to go. Still not touching my selvages at all. It's the technique. This is not me. This is throw, beat, change, beat her back. And that's what gives you this. Plus the way I wound my bobbin so that nothing is ever snagging. So I can teach beginners to have this kind of speed and technique within a day. And so it's not me, it is the technique. Okay, time to advance. You can hear that horrible sound again. Sorry. I promise I will wax that before we come back next time.
Okay, where's my, okay, my extension part on my measuring tape? That looks kind of like a square, but my, now I'm doubting myself. I think I've gone too far again. <sighs> oh. oh, look at that. See, it's so good to have your eyes out. This is five and a quarter, and I'm not quite there yet. I have like three or four more picks. have to be this fussy. Looks pretty darn good. That that width part hasn't changed. I can put one more in. <laughs> Better make sure that width doesn't change. Tech, I'm going to put two in just to be on the safe side. And now I'm back to my four and four sequence. Purple, so I'll have a nice little purple frame all around my green box. Start you here. sequence would be wider bands of green with a smaller band of this repeating over and over. There's so many places to go with stuff like this. Um, we always, I'm always sad when my warps are over. Always. There's something, let's look at the back, Sharon. There's something that's making. I'm going to show you what I'm seeing. You see that little loof right there? I'm seeing this little, like there's something oh, yeah. in here that's causing some grief for my warp. So I want to go to the back of the loom and look and see. And I bet you it's uh, some threads that I threw out of here uh, because I didn't count when I was making that warp. So when I got this all threaded and checked it yesterday after uh, we stopped. There was a couple of extra threads in here that I didn't need, so I ripped them out and left them off the back. But I have a feeling they are weaving into this and making a mess. So let's go back here and look. And look, it's true. Oops. Oh. <laughs> That's funny, because you know what? They're going to be all tipsy curvy. And it would be like they did tie one on. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, see? I knew that something had to be causing all that crap on the other side. And this is what I tossed off. And so I need to be mindful of that. So there you go down there but that's what was causing that so if you see something weird on your weaving side come to the back side and see what's going on don't blame your loom <laughs> don't blame your warp it could be something in your warp but this is going to all straighten out now and I won't 
see that. Ooh, nice and clean. No tension issues in there anymore. And I'm going to need a new bobbin in a minute. Okay, let's so see, we're right at the very end of the bobbin and nothing is catching. I promised I was going to tell you why building up the sides causes that. Um, so I'll do that when I get up to wind this new bobbin. So I've got enough, or I don't have enough for my last sequence. So I'm going to leave that out here and um, I'll go wind a purple and another purple and a turquoise or peacock because I need them the most. But first of all, I'm going to do a little drawing for you on my little sketch pad. I what did I do with my pen? Oh, there it is. Okay, so typically when I first learned how to weave, I was taught to wind up the sides like this. To do that, then come across to this side and do that and then fill in. All right? But I always found that when I got to the very end of my weaving, it was always snagging, you know, it was, uh, my yarn was snagging. Maybe it was just me, I don't know. But I realized then when I watched and saw what was happening, that, that this going up the side was fine as long as it had this stuff in it to hold it up the side. But as soon as this stuff was gone, then this stuff started to implode and that's what was causing that snagging. So that's why I just start, I tie on in the middle, but, or wrap on, but then I just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until I'm halfway up the bobbin. And then I start coming in and I wind it more like a quill, paper quills that used to be used for weaving in shuttles and still are in Europe, pardon me. There's lots of millions of people who still do that but it's more of that shape. And then it's just like it unfolds, the yarn unfolds and you never end up with that tugging at the end, which always drove me nuts, especially when you're ripping along because then it snags, it snags on your uh, salvage. And that makes your salvage look sad. Okay, I'm gonna just wind two more bobbins. A poipo. Try and do it from this side. Move my foot pedal over here. Okay, 
Here we go. Do it so you've got control over it. Fingers right on. I guess I noticed that something's kind of weird. It's saying find a face. So have we lost? Oh, it's, it's, it's is it too dark. My face? I don't know. Is it too dark? Back. We figured it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing over here with this guy. He's coming out there, so we'll just break him off, beat him in, and lay this right on top. And then that does not change the direction that my shuttle is in, and it keeps my scalloping in line. So there, it's in the same shed, change the shed, and carry on. It's the same thing as doing a wrap around the top. coming to the home, down the home stretch of this, another 10 inches, yahoo, whoops, to take him, put him into the shed, but I'm going to pull him up on top. <clears throat> so that, so it's got a good overlap of, you know, like that. Shut the door, change your shed, and now that's locked in. And when these are washed, these little guys will get cut off. There's so many different ways to handle that stuff. There's not just one. You can't do that with fat threads. You can only do that with skinny little threads like this. Fat threads, we'd have to splice there. So there's not just one way. You need to be adaptable as a weaver to try all kinds of different things. Okay. Big loud noise again. There. And I'll measure just to make sure I don't make this side. 60 inches long. <laughs> okay. I have to go to 14. So I need, uh, you know, almost to the next time I have to advance four more inches. And then my hem and we're done our first towel. Pretty good. My paper is underneath my treadles now. So I'm, all I'm doing is standing up and moving my paper so I don't have to listen to that. I think it's been a good couple of days. Um, made that warp on Tuesday afternoon. That was late in the day when I finally got my head together. And uh, so I was on the loom yesterday, threaded, first towel woven today. Good, good technique. Um, if all of these processes are fast and easy, and, and what I've tried to show in the last few days is that none of this needs to be scary. It's a very logical steps. And 
and it can be so simple. And one thing I always told my students that came here is that repetition leads to mastery. If you want to get good at something, make the same thing over and over and over until you have it down and then launch. Would you look at that? 14 inches. Hot dog. <laughs> I should have measured it. Now I have to take those last four out and get my this tucked. Or I could do another sequence. So what the heck, eh? Who's going to measure that? for purple. I really should be advancing my work. But, you know, we all do it. Oh, yes. Tuck that tail. And now I gotta do my my square and my hem. My low black square and my hem and then we're done. So this is like five more minutes. Three inches of black. That gets me my square and my hem. There's our first towel. Um, I'm going to put, I don't have any here right now, but before I come back on Tuesday, I'm gonna get a big bobbin of a heavier yarn and I'll throw two picks of a heavier yarn right in here. And then I'll start the next towel right on top of it. And when these come off the, 
loom, I'll zigzag along this edge and zigzag along the other edge, cut between those two thick yarns, two thick picks, and the towels will come apart. So, <laughs> the reeds in the back. Of course, you're in little arms. <laughs> Thanks for uh, hanging out with me these last few days. It's helped me and I hope it's helped you and I want you to have a great weekend, a long weekend for me. It's, I'm gonna love this four days off and uh, I'm gonna spend it outside in my garden. Not let anybody come over, but I'll talk to everybody on the phone. <laughs> so you do the same, stay in, stay safe. Talk to everybody on the phone. That's all you get to do. <laughs> love you tons. See you next week. Bye.